Welcome everybody to EP's session. Today we will show you an internal presentation of an autonomous LoRa device supplied by Energy Harvesting. I'm Sarah and I'm working as Field Application Engineer at EPIS. During this session, I will present you our AEM family standing for Ambient Energy Manager and what makes this family unique. After presenting our demo kit supplied by Photovoltaic Energy Harvesting, I will guide you through the device in order to demonstrate step by step how you can build your own energy harvesting LoRa device. For Q&A, please stay with us. Along with my colleagues, we will be glad to help you. EPIS was created five years ago at the University UCL in Belgium, based on more than 10 years of research about low-power IC design. The first product family was designed to address the IoT world and offers a solution for energy harvesting. AEM family is available in mass production. EPIS products are represented all over the world thanks to our offices in Belgium, Switzerland and USA, as well as our worldwide distribution network. But why is our first product family dedicated to energy harvesting? The number of electronic devices increases every day. We are surrounded by connected devices, tracking devices or sensing devices. We can find applications for predictive maintenance or monitoring processes in the Industry 4.0. Applications in the OS for smart home monitoring enable a control over your consumption or security. Unfortunately, most of those devices are powered by disposable batteries. Deploying millions of batteries will lead to replacing millions of batteries within the next five years. Changing all those batteries causes battery maintenance headache to end user and industries. How to estimate the real lifetime? Who is going to change it? How much is it going to cost you? Energy harvesting offers you a solution to these problems and removes the maintenance cost and issues. Indeed, energy harvesting is a new way of supplying your low power application with available ambient energy. But how is it possible and what do you need to supply your hardware device with ambient energy? First, you need an harvester to transform the energy into electrical power. Each source requires an adapted harvester with a specific behavior. Then, you need a storage element to store the energy for later use. You might be wondering why you do need other elements to supply your hardware device. Because of those reasons. First, you would like to extract the maximum available power to optimize the energy harvesting. Then, you would like the system to call start and even work at low voltage and low power. Eventually, you would like to protect your storage element. And optionally, you would like to integrate a converter to directly supply your hardware devices. All those functions are integrated in our AEM family. And how do we ensure to extract the maximum power? Let's take a photovoltaic cell as an example and look at its power versus voltage curve. This one is represented here in green and the blue curve is the current versus voltage. We can see a new graph below higher luminosity. For both cases, one can observe a maximum power point. Those red points are the ones we want to work at to extract the maximum power from the ambient source. All the harvester present a power curve looking like a bell with a maximum. Their shape could vary, but they all share a maximum power point. This means that we need to work at a defined voltage, called here VMPP. Using a normal boost won't be efficient because you have no control on the working voltage and you may not even start since voltage are lower than alpha volt. In order to start harvesting and extract the maximum, you need a call start and a tracking feature. And how does this tracking work? 
by measuring the open circuit voltage of the harvester at a constant frequency. Indeed, the ratio between the VMPP and the open circuit voltage is defined by the harvester technology. Please note that this ratio is provided by the harvester manufacturer. At a constant frequency, the AM gets disconnected to let the harvester achieve its open circuit voltage. And after measuring and applying the ratio, the AM has a new working voltage adapted to the environment changes. Regarding the configuration, please note that the AM family is a strictly hardware design. It is configured with IO pins and does not require any software. To summarize, the AM extracts the maximum available power and manages it to the storage element with only 400 nanoamps internal global leakage. It could start from only 3 microwatts at 380 millivolts and enables the system to start from deeply discharged nodes. The AM adapts its working voltage to extract the maximum power from the harvester. Eventually, the AM protects the storage element from overcharge and overdischarge and provides two regulated output voltages to supply your hardware device. The complete family includes a product for each source with a MPP ratio and a frequency adapted. The AM10941 for photovoltaic sources the AAM2940 for thermal sources, with an external cold start circuit to start at 60 mV. The AAM3940 for AC sources. In case of radio frequency, a matching network and a RF rectifier are required to provide DC voltage to the AM. In case of low frequency, like vibration source or inductive current, an external rectifier must be added to provide DC voltage to the AM. Support is provided by EP, so please do not hesitate to have a look at our website. But what makes our AM unique? The knowledge of EPs remain in its ability to design low power and low voltage circuits. We can observe the great work in the internal boost working from 50 mV after cold start, in the global leakage current of only 400 nanoamps, in the cold start condition showing the lowest power condition on the market, in its easy use and configuration, and its unique features. The BAL feature enables to balance dual cell supercapacitor without any external leakage. The ZMPP features allow to work at a defined impedance instead of a voltage ratio. This feature is dedicated for TG harvester or EC sources. For all those reasons, the AM is extracting and managing the available power with low losses and easy use. Please note that the internal structure is common to all AEM. MPP ratio and frequency have been adapted to the source in order to optimize the energy harvesting. Do not hesitate to visit our website for more details about our evaluation boards and documentation around the AEM family. And now let's look at the LoRa device kit. Imagine a smart home application sensing the temperature, the humidity and the luminosity in order to send those data to an application on your smartphone. This could be useful to monitor hidden lights in your home. But imagine your customer changing the batteries, one after the other. What if you could propose them an autonomous system? No need to change the battery. By looking deeper at our lower demo kit, you can see three low power sensors measuring the temperature, the humidity, and the luminosity. Of course, it integrates a photovoltaic cell to harvest from indoor light and a supercapacitor to store energy. 
It also integrates a radio module, a LoRa one in this case, which is sending messages every six minutes. The messages go to the TTM gateway. Here the gateway has been registered by EPs to the Thing network. The gateway connected to the TTN cloud sends the data to the TTN application. This application has been registered and developed by EPs. You can see here the mini demo application that we use to collect our demo kit's data. And the 39 demo kits register as devices connected to our application. As soon as the device is registered, you can see its ID and the application it is linked to. The status here shows the communication happened one minute ago. From the TTN cloud, the smartphone application, developed by EPIS, recovers the data. You can visualize the graphs of the storage element voltage and the sensor's data. If we open the outer box to look inside the device, we can find low power sensor in red, a photovoltaic cell dedicated to indoor light in yellow, a supercapacitor in blue, our AM10941 in green, and low power electronic has a MCU with a LoRa radio. But how did we size the element? Based on the power load consumption, 50 microwatts, we calculate the energy consumed by the MCU, the radio and sensors. We can estimate the energy that must be boosted in the storage element by integrating the LDO converter efficiency and the internal leakage current of the supercapacitor. From this boost energy, we can estimate the required power source from the harvester by integrating the time that the power is available and the internal boost efficiency. Eventually, we can estimate the energy that must be stored. Indeed, energy must be stored for the moment no energy is available. For example, during night if the light is the source. Assuming 8 hours of light and a supercapacitor with a 1 microamps internal leakage, we estimate the size of the storage and the power required at the source to supply the load at 3.3 volt. We define that the required autonomy is about 16 hours, considering the light to be back each morning. Starting from the average load consumption, we can estimate the consume energy over a day. Then we integrate the LDO efficiency and the internal storage leakage current to estimate the energy that must be boosted. The power required at the source, including the boost efficiency and the fact that the light is available 8 hours per day, is about 210 microwatts. The energy to be stored is the one necessary during 16 hours. If the energy required over a day is about 5.5 Joule, the one for 16 hours is about 3.6 Joule. The supercapacitor size required to store this amount of energy between the maximum level, 4.5 volt, and minimum level, 3.6 volt, on the supercapacitor is about 1.1 farad. From the required power at the harvester, we can start looking at the adequate harvester technology for indoor light environment. The dye-sensitive cell is a good choice. The product from 3G Solar has been selected. Below low light luminosity of 300 lux, the required area to provide around 200 microwatts is about 17.5 cm square. 35 by 50 mm. From the energy to be stored, we did estimate the supercapacitor size as about 1.1 farad. 
For another use case, the same estimation could be done for battery. For this case, the supercapacitor from Capixis has been selected. The dimensions are 39 by 17 by 3.9 mm. With 8 hours of indoor light, around 300 lux, the device can harvest and store sufficient energy to supply the sensor all day long. Messages from the LoRa device are available on EP's application with new values every 6 minutes. With energy harvesting, every day is bringing new energy. On the graph, we can see that the storage element is getting charged in the morning and is staying around the maximum allowed value during the day. During the night, the supercapacitor supplies this device and is getting discharged. By the next morning, the light is back to recharge the device, ensuring 24-7 monitoring. The temperature rises with the sun and the luminosity increases also. During the night, the luminosity gets to zero and the temperature in the offices decreases. We can see how the humidity is related to the temperature in the room. We can see on the right graph how the voltage on the supercap has been moving for several days. Even below low luminosity, like on this specific day number 4, the storage has been charged. Imagine your device is deployed all over the world without any battery maintenance cost or issues. Of course, each hardware device shows different requirements and the element must be sized based on your expectation. The most important is to understand what you would like to supply in order to estimate the load consumption. Then define which converter to use and understand your environment to identify when the energy might be available. Eventually, choose which autonomy you need and when the source won't be available. The first step to cite the elements required to supply your hardware device with energy harvesting is about the hardware device and what should be supplied. You must first wondering what sensor you would like to supply, for example, monitoring sensor, temperature, tracking, air quality, and much more. At what frequency do you need to sense the data and how often do you need to communicate? When the application must be working, is it all the time, during the day, only during the working week? What processing would you like to supply and integrate to your device? Next step is about the voltage you do need to supply all this electronics. About the environment, you must first identify which source is available, when is it available and for how long. Regarding the storage, you must consider when the device must be working without any power available from the source. The worst cases should be taken, but strict constraints will require larger storage and bigger harvester. Be careful not to overconstrain the system. After selecting potential harvester and storage, you can use an evaluation board to test the system. I hope that you better learned how to make your devices autonomous for large deployment without any maintenance cost and issues. Have a look at our website to get more details and documentation. Thank you for staying with us and enjoy the rest of the conference.